Now, Ronan Mullen, good morning to you. How are things, Jer? Yeah, pretty good. So, um, Katie Taylor is fighting this weekend. A much less hyped fight for Katie Taylor this weekend. A couple of reasons. I think there's way more sport on, but also the fact that there isn't this deep-seated rivalry. This isn't a rematch. This isn't a grudge match, as far as we know. Um, tell us a little bit about her opponent to try and bring anybody who hasn't quite tuned into the fact that this is available free to air on Saturday evening for everybody. Yeah, well, I think you, you've hit the nail on the head there. It's not quite on par in terms of gravitas, like opponent-wise. You know, it's not a Delphine Pursun or an Amanda Serrano, which is still a fight on the horizon for Katie Taylor. This is a mandatory challenger who um, has kind of been... It kind of speaks to the importance of these trinkets that we see, these belts that are given out, these not world titles, but those tiers then. So Miriam Gutierrez has won a European title in the past. She won the WBA's international title, which kind of put her in a ranking position to become Katie Taylor's mandatory. And it's just, it just speaks to the importance of having a good manager. It can maneuver you into these positions where maybe her profile isn't quite befitting this caliber of fight that she's getting. But Miriam Gutierrez was a, was a pretty decent amateur in Spain. She, she didn't get into the Olympic opportunity purely by dint of the fact that she was fighting in one of the, the heavier, heavier divisions which meant that it wasn't it wasn't an Olympic weight class, basically. So to take this fight with Katie Taylor or to pursue her pro career at all, she's had to shed in the region of about 20 pounds just to get get there. And she's she's 37 now, still quite new to the pro game, about four years in. And I'd say she's pinching herself that she's in this position because she's spoken openly in the past about when she, when she boxed at European Championships or EU Games, that she'd be one of the first people trying to see Katie Taylor's fights. You know, such was Katie Taylor's profile at the time. So it's kind of one of these unusual matchups, Jer. But as Katie pointed out in our conversations yesterday, this this is not just a different fight in terms of profile. It's also a very different style because Miriam Gutierrez brings that amateur style to the table. She's definitely more of a technician. Katie used the word stylist yesterday. So Miriam Gutierrez isn't going to come in here with this sort of abandon that the likes of Delphine Pursun or Christina and Odati have shown in Katie's recent fights. I don't think she's going to be able to outbox Katie Taylor, but it's going to be a very different approach to what we've seen from Katie Taylor opponents so far. In what way? I think, well, you will have seen Pursun and you will have seen Leonard Atu, who literally, or well, I should say figuratively, threw the kitchen sink at Katie, and it was um, a little bit ungainly to say, to, to be kind almost, that she, they weren't picking their punches with much, uh, with much from the boxing textbook, whereas... Uh, Gutierrez will be almost she if you look at her fights she's good at putting combinations together where she probably will fall down is a P. Katie Taylor the speed differential is just so clear between her and all her opponents and that will be the case here as well where you just expect Katie to be able to find fire in between um, Gutierrez's attacks but it won't be like it shouldn't be because if she tries to do what Pursun did there's no one quite like Pursun I can't see that boding well for Gutierrez, but she will try and impose her own tactical skills on Katie and just hope it's an off night for, for the champion. But it's hard to see a route to victory for Gutierrez, but I, I can't see it playing out in the same way we've seen Katie's last few. Katie Taylor's 40 to 1 on for this fight. Gutierrez is 16 to 1 with uh, Paddy Power. I, I, those seem like. Um, I, Katie Taylor doesn't win her fights easily. Like, there's, there's, she, she has frequently got dragged into having wrestling matches and uh, and fights. So Gutierrez won't do that. Is that what you're saying? Like just judging off her her career to date, that's just not her style. So and her coach was speaking last week, or her manager rather was speaking last week and saying, don't expect that because she's not that kind of fighter. And wh where I fall down on on this argument is that you can't see the only. Opponents who've been able to trouble, Kate, trouble Katie Taylor in her professional career have been those sort of roughhouse tactics. And I just can't see a way Gutierrez can bring that to the table. That's not saying that she could uh, throw out her game plan to date and impose those tactics. She is obviously the, the bigger fighter in the ring on Saturday. But to speak like those odds that you mentioned, it is a bit of a long shot for her either way. So I think she'll, she'll leave it all in there. But if you look at Katie Taylor's record so far. This is her 11th world title fight in a row. Like eight of those were either former world champions, world champions at the time, or have since gone on to be world champions. And uh, the other two, or sorry, nine of those. And then the other two, 
is this Gutierrez here, and the last one was Kimberly Connor, who was Katie Titter's last mandatory challenger, and that was a bit of a that was a very straightforward night for Katie Taylor. So it's just the the nature of boxing politics, Jerry, which we don't have to get into. We've spoken about a lot over the years that mandatories, the governing bodies like to get their little piece of the pie, and this was a mandatory that was hanging over Katie Taylor's head, and she's in the rare position. We've talked about boxing behind closed doors, and um, fighters are loath to do it or reluctant to do it, but this is Katie Taylor's second uh, fight in the bubble, which puts her in, in, in sort of a rare class. So she's well experienced in, in this already. And to get a fight in before the end of the year, which would be uncommon for, for a champion of her ilk. You know Anthony Joshua only fights twice a year at the best of times and will only fight once this year. And that's kind of the done thing for, for top-level fighters these days. But Katie Taylor is going to squeeze one more in here and that will give her sort of a clear path in 2021 to chase those big fights. And the names were mentioned again yesterday. Chris Cyborg, she was almost reticent to to bring up Amanda Serrano's name, such as being the the sort of troublesome way that that fight just hasn't been able to come together for for a host of different reasons. But she those those names will crop up again uh, should Katie get the win on Saturday, and there's no reason to expect she won't. One of the names that has popped up this week as well is Chantelle Cameron, the the British 29 year old fighter. This week she's been saying that Katie doesn't like pressure. She stands there to have a fight but she isn't very powerful. And this is the stage where Taylor seems to be adding her career now, Ronan, where everybody has seen enough of her as a professional and they think that she has shown so many signs of weakness that she's very beatable. Is that lack of power, that perceived lack of power, going to be an issue in terms of Katie Taylor continuing to go undefeated in the pro, in the pro ranks? Yeah, it would appear to be. I think the likes when you're a highly technical fighter like Taylor... And it's something that's true throughout the history of boxing. Even if you're not a big puncher, you need to be you need to punch hard enough to get your opponent's respect and almost keep them keep them off you. And the likes of Chantel Cameron, just young, vibrant fighters, would fancy their chances of putting it on Katie Taylor. It's interesting. The word crumble is just a word you don't use against fellow boxers, and it is one that jars with them. Someone did put that to to Katie yesterday, and Katie said, I'm not the type of fighter who crumbles, so can we just move on from that? I'm focused on Saturday night. If that fight happens between myself and Chantel, we'll see who crumbles. So we know Katie has grown into the, the trash talk world a little bit old, but I, I just like her, her little icy repast. She, she doesn't take kindly to, to people calling out her credentials. But it is also, on the flip side, I would say it is nice to see um, people. There is sort of a... People are like to eulogize around Katie Taylor, and rightly so, for what she's done for women's boxing. And you see the other fighters in this card this weekend were basically Katie Taylor fans, and she's very much blazed the trail for them to succeed. But at the same time, if you're in her division, you know, you can't, you, you have to approach it in this kind of way. And we saw recently with Lomachenko, who was considered the, possibly the greatest boxer of all time, was dethroned by Teofimo Lopez, who basically looked at Lomachenko and said, yeah, you're brilliant, but I'm brilliant too, and I've got a game plan to beat you. And he, he went on and did it. So these fighters have to think like that if they're going to beat Katie Taylor. You can't go in there with the already beaten almost, which was the the, the old Mike Tyson effect. But um, to your point, I do think Katie Taylor, it's just going to be more about polishing up her her technical skills zone because she's never going to punch hard enough to be to be getting strings and knockouts. But if she can continue boxing at this level, 34 years old now, and that the fleet of foot nature of Katie Taylor that we saw throughout her amateur days and so far in the pros, it won't go on forever. She's, she's talking about boxing until 40. I don't know if um, that's an actual target or just uh, she's kicking the retirement can down the road a little bit, so she's not asked about it. But she's going to be around for a long time to come, it would seem. Do you think so? I, I'm not sure. I think that, that how, I think you're dead right about the kicking the can down the road. It's, it's, she says she's going to fight until 40, and then at some point she wakes up and goes, I've had enough of this. And that could, mm. be, that could be next summer, that could be the summer after. It would be remarkable to box until you're 40, given that she's achieved so much already. So what would what would the motivation be? I suppose money is obviously the, the main thing. You're in a sport for um, professional sport to make money. But at that stage, and also the point that Owen makes about everybody having enough tape on her now to realise that actually these are the weaknesses in her game. Um, there are no doubt fighters who are coming up that are going to be at a higher standard than the ones that she's met so far, who will also have the tape and the evidence on Katie Taylor. So is it the right thing to do not to kind of get out at the top? It probably is, but if she sees winnable fights in front of her, like she's already done so much in two different weight classes, and we've spoken on previous shows about Jessica McCaskill, 
which is a troublesome style for anybody, let alone Katie Taylor. McCaskill gave Katie a very good fight with that sort of rough and tumble style. And, you know, if Katie wants to move up and fight there, that would be another history-making attempt. So that's kind of one on the horizon. And you have got those starry names, which, with all due respect to Chris Cyborg, if she, if she boxes Katie Taylor, there's only one winner there. But you can imagine the crossover potential. And Is Chris Cyborg you know, not an, an absolute giant compared to Katie Taylor? Yeah, but we saw Mayweather against McGregor, Jer. It doesn't really matter about the, your MMA credentials. If you box, if you box a high-level boxer, it, it, it's only going to end up one way. And I think Katie was actually asked about maybe doing a return fight in the cage, and I don't think that's going to be happening either. So, But you can imagine the build-up to that fight and the MMA community getting behind it, and that would open up new avenues for Katie Taylor in that regard as well. And, you know, if, if she wins that one, it opens up doors with other crossover fights. So there are so many options on the table that you can't see, really see her walking away. But then, you know, again, if you look through the history books of boxing, there are plenty of fighters who had those options on the table, like Lennox Lewis, Andre Ward most recently, who had lucrative options, big contracts on the table, and decided to walk away. But you cast your mind back to, to 2016, and November 2016, as we've seen the last few days, was, was a big month, and there have been big changes as of November 2020. But coming off the back of Rio, it's hard to foresee what what um, Katie Taylor has gone on to achieve. It's just quite remarkable. And that um, that DM that she sent Eddie Hearn about wanting to turn pro, and Eddie Hearn, not to say he took a punt on it because Katie Taylor had the, the background to suggest she would succeed, but Sky had no women's boxing on their roster at that stage, really. And Katie Taylor was the first flag signed in that regard. And you see, in that four-year stretch, what, what's going to be achievable now where there's three women's world title fights on the card and it's a it's not just a it's not a midweek card katie taylor's headline midweek at york hall in the past she's been the main fight on the bill in the past but then hasn't been the last fight on the night whereas this one she very much is the the cornerstone attraction on as you said a fight that will be streamed like anyone with a device will be able to watch this fight because it's online sky sports facebook and on the normal sky sports channels so this will probably be the most viewed katie taylor fight since the olympic final and uh, for that reason alone, it's worth watching. She was saying during the week that I'd love to see the purses rising. I think over the last few years, we've made great ground and equal pay. I'm personally very happy with the purses I've received for fights every time, but I wouldn't say no to a pay rise either. She says, I guess it is very low in comparison to what the men are getting, but that's the way it is. I hope it increases and we are slowly building. It takes time. Obviously, it, you can only say so much when you know that Eddie Hearn is listening to everything you say. You can't complain about what you're getting. But uh, I guess she is saying here that there should be a higher purse over the, the next little while. Is this something that Eddie Hearn is, is interested in giving out over, over the next little while? Or the big promoters are interested in investing in over the next little while, Ronan? Yeah, I think it's testament to the fact that the purses aren't on any sort of level pegging that they're able to afford to put three... Uh, world title fights featuring women on the card on a non-pay-per-view event because it would seem that top-level fighters the world over, if they're in any sort of meaningful fight, it's it's on pay-per-view. This is actually a rare weekend where you've got arguably the best uh, female boxer in the world in Katie Taylor and the best male boxer in the world in Terence Crawford fighting on regular channels rather than behind a paywall. So that's for boxing fans, it is quite a, a standout weekend. But in terms of getting things up to, to par, Owen, you just Katie Taylor does have a lot of a burden on her shoulders in terms of blazing that trail, as I said. And as it stands, she and a, a couple of others, the likes of Clarissa Shields, are on in their own strata. And it's kind of they have, they have to be the rising tide that lifts all boats. And the, the hope is that there is enough talent coming through. And we see it because um, Terry Harper who fights has been a she fights this weekend, I should say has been a central figure in sort of Sky's promotion of late. So she's kind of carved out her own niche as well. Natasha Jonas, who'll be on co-commentary, is a very popular fighter in the UK. Chantel Cameron, who you mentioned, has a big following, as does uh, Shannon Courtney. These, these kind of fighters just in the UK alone. And we've seen in Irish boxing the, the cast of characters which have come in Katie Taylor's wake. Like, we have one of the strongest boxing teams in the world from a women's perspective. So you just hope that strength of, am of amateur women's boxing, which is undoubted, will eventually mm -hmm. cross over into the into the professional game. And if, if those fighters are given the opportunity to do to do that normal crossover that men's do, if you're a brilliant 
a male amateur, it's the obvious next step to be a brilliant male pro. And Kelly Harrington, I believe, was speaking to yourself, saying, yeah. you know, I'm not going to do it for buttons. And that's the reality of it. If, if Kelly Harrington was a man, she would be getting any manner of contracts thrown at her, given what she would bring to the table in terms of a character. And, you know, her, her credentials are almost unparalleled. So that's the kind of worry you just hope that you know, Eddie Hearn, not to pick him out specifically because in comparison to his competitors, he's actually done a very good job. But, you know, you kind of have to put your money where your mouth is now and actually get behind the grassroots of, of women's boxing. And hopefully this w this is just going to be another kick on. Katie spoke about it yesterday that there will probably be girls on Saturday who've never seen her box before that would be able to see it. And that can only bode well too. What time is the ring walk? Well, she's the main event. So you're looking at in 10.30 for Katie Taylor on Saturday, I'd say. All right, good stuff, Ronan. Enjoy. Thanks a million. Cheers, lads. It's a very busy weekend of live women's sport. We'll get more details on that for you in Owen's now weekly feature about uh, how to stay on the couch and do nothing but watch TV for the entire week.